Morning, uh, councillors. CEO, directors, ladies and gentlemen. The traditional custodians of the land on which we are privileged to meet represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations as part of one of the oldest living cultures on the planet. We pay our respects to the Indigenous leaders, their elders past and present, and recognise their continuing connection to our land and to our community. Welcome to the uh, members of the public gallery. I just draw your attention to the live streaming of council meetings up in the right hand corner up there. Uh, these, uh, the meeting today is being recorded, both video and audio. And uh, you're advised that participating in the meeting, you're consenting to your image and your voice and your comments being recorded and published. No, I declare the meeting open and welcome, councillors. Pretty rushed. <laughs> and uh, and our, our, our opening prayer today is the Reverend, Reverend Julia Pittman. Julia, thank you very much. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of our life and God of our salvation, guide this meeting of Mackay Regional Council and all those who direct its business. Grant your blessing on their strengths. Show your mercy and forgiveness where council falls short of your hopes for them. Sustain them in their work. Support them in their fears. Strengthen them in their resolve to seek and pursue the peace, harmony and welfare of all the people of our Mackay Regional Council area. Give us all as citizens alike joy in the service of the public through due pride in success and the approval of a good conscience in all that we do. May your Holy Spirit so work among us that our Mackay Regional Council area may be renewed in truth, beauty and order and in happiness and peace. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, nobody absent on council business, no apology. Oh, we do have an apology from Councillor G. He just uh, more than sick today. Um, so would somebody move that the absence for today be granted? Moved by Councillor Cam, seconded by uh, Councillor Casey. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried. Thank you. Condolences? No condolences? Any conflicts of interest to declare? No conflicts of interest. Let's move on to the confirmation of minutes and the ordinary meeting of the 8th of May. Can somebody move that the ordinary meeting of the 8th of May minutes be adopted? Okay. Councillor Englert, uh, Councillor May seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. There's no business arising out of those previous minutes as we've been advised. No mayoral minutes, uh, the consideration of committee reports. Let's move on to that now. Um, and the correspondence, first of all, 11.1 is the attendance of councillors at an economic development conference. There's one change to the documentation that went out for you councillors. Uh, I think you'll see that change on the, on the screen right now. Um, Councillor Cam, the second dot point of the one that was published, Councillor Cam's Sustainable Economic Growth for Regional Australia. That's the SEGRA conference that's been removed. So we're looking at Councillor Cam and Councillor May at the uh, Northern Australia uh, conference on the 11th to the 12th of July, and Councillor Mann, Councillor May, and Councillor Anglet to attend the uh, Cities, Towns, and Centres Community Conference on the 23 25 October. Any questions? Somebody would like to move the adoption? Councillor Anglet, seconded by Councillor Walker. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. And point two, invitation for. Um, myself to join the Premier of Queensland's official trade delegation um, in a little over a week's time. As always, a lot of, uh, of pre-warning, but uh, we, we did have a briefing about this. Any questions? Somebody like to move? Councillor Casey moves, Councillor Mann seconds. Oh, any discussion? I don't think there's any discussion, Your Worship. Okay. You've got to be there. Thank you. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Attendance of 11.3 uh, yeah, now is attendance of councillor at the uh, 2019 Australian New Zealand Disaster and Emergency Management Conference, and uh, that's councillor Englert as being uh, suggested goes to that one. 
Any discussion? Somebody would like to move? Councillor Payton moves, Councillor Cam seconds. I'll put the mic. You've got a question? I'm going to ask a question, Your Worship. Yes. Uh, look, Your Worship, on this one I'm just undecided and I need to ask a question. Uh, before casting my vote on this motion, I require assurance from Councillor Englert that the report from the conference he attended last year in Western Australia um, at ratepayers' expense will be forthcoming. We have received many reports from others, for example, Councillors um, Mann and May on their trip to uh, the museum's trip, Councillor Bella on his trip to the Northern Alliance of Councils conference. These have been brought back to this chamber and given all councillors the high points and their perspectives on each event. Councillor Englert, last time I asked you informally, you stated you were waiting for a report to come. Surely seven or eight months is long enough. So before I cast my vote, I must ask, will you be delivering a report to Council? You can ask the Chair that, you can ask me, that's all right. So, thanks, Councillor Englert. We're, I think we've had a direction of Council since then that we will have uh, every Councillor who goes to a conference uh, has to abide by the policy to report back to Council. So that will, that will be an expectation. Can I ask the Chair a question? Uh, you certainly can, Councillor Englert. In light of Councillor Byron Chair's um, uh, bring up what I possibly interpret as a complaint about my delay in my report in the public forum. What um, what forum do I have to reply to that complaint? Uh, it's not a complaint. It was a question asked as part of uh, this debate, and I, I took it that Councillor Bonaventure was actually speaking against the motion uh, because he stood to speak. So, Councillor Englund, you. You have a, a right of reply to, at any stage uh, right by the council table. You can do that right now if you want. Oh, so thank you, Worship. Speaking to your motion, you can you can encourage um, that. I'll take the chair's advice on that. Um, it's not my motion. I didn't. Am I, am I able to reply to you? You can speak to your motion. You can reply. Okay, thank you. As I've said a number of occasions, the 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 report on the International Cities and Town Centres Conference is delayed. I've had offline, it's the first time Council of Mature has asked me about an issue online before bringing it up in the public realm, which I was grateful for. I would ask that the director um, maybe can explain through an email to the councillors that um, myself and the city centre coordinator have been waiting on um, some information from the International Cities and Town Conference people. It took uh, a very long time to get that. It was a, it was a key part of the report. And uh, since then also we've uh, attempted to have a couple of meetings between myself and the City Centre Coordinator to get the, the information together um, and to, to this date we've been able, unable to have that meeting as well. So um, I'm happy to put the information I have forward to Council in the short term. It, wouldn't be, it won't be as much information as if I'm able to um, work with the City Centre Coordinator on the final report. I prefer to work on the final report and bring it to Council when the report is finalised. Thanks very much, Councillor Englert. All right. There's no further discussion on that. Uh, well, are you, do you want to speak to the motion, Councillor Cam? I do. Thank you, Your Worship. Speaking to the motion. I speaking am, for the motion. I am. Thank you, Councillor um, Mayor. Given I seconded it, um, I, I actually, for Councillor Bonaventure's peace of mind, I can actually assure him that I've seen the presentation that Councillor Englert had requested from International Cities and Towns, which took uh, a ridiculous amount of time. I would say about over six months, and that was brought about between the delay of our director leaving and also being able to track down those presentations from that. Um, that information was shared to the Regional Economy Working Group informally uh, and I'm sure that that is, um, is, is, to, is part of the reason why we haven't seen forthcoming a full documented report um, that would be acceptable by Council uh, uh, that, we, that we foresee in, in the way we have to structure reports. So just to give Council Bonaventure a level of surety, I've seen the presentations and the email request that Councillor Inglet uh, requested through the Regional Economy Working Group. So um, that information is really important and it's very critical to the future of the way in which uh, we construct a strategy for the city now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Payton, are you speaking for the motion? And as I move the motion. Yes. <laughs> well, well. Thank you. I'll just brief, very briefly, uh, just with uh, Councillor Englert's uh, interest and experience in the emergency management, um, as, as Councillor to go, go to this event. Thank you. All right. Any further speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Councillor Bonaventura. So, what do you. I just. 
Your Worship, I now need to speak for the motion. I've had a reply from Did you speak for, against the motion before? No, no. I said I was undecided and needed an assurance. Well, that should have been a okay. question. And it was a question, and questions are allowed. Well, we, we had a motion on the table before. I asked for questions, then we had a motion. Correct. So you're out of line with the order. So I'm happy to hear you speak for the motion now. You Thank you. Prepared. In relation to Councillor Ang uh, Anglis' reply, and that from the Deputy Mayor, um, I appreciate the assurance that we are going to get a full report. And yes, if it is a full report and they're waiting for information, I look forward to a full report and I'm prepared to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. I put the motion, those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. 11.4, Engineering Commercial Infrastructure Water Services Monthly Review for April 2019. CEO. Thank you, Your Worship. Morning, councillors. Um, very pleasing to see that water treatment staff were recognised for 36 months LTI free. Uh, fantastic effort from that group of people. And there's no LTIs in that department for the year, so that's great. Uh, the number of plumbing applications remains low in 19, compared to previous. Um, we have 45 new My Water registrations in April, taking the total to 14,174. I will say, if you've um, seen our new digital signs at Nibar Road and Barnes Creek, one of the slides on there is the My Water, so we think that will be a great, there's 44,000 cars go past those two signs a day, so we're hoping that that will see an increase with that promotion. Uh, as expected, uh, all dams are at full capacity, except for Peter Faust Dam. Um, and you can see, which is probably a little bit, um, probably what we all knew, but we didn't know if you saw on page 43 of the report, the rainfall for the last five months has been quite consistent. Uh, so that's why our water consumption is, is down, but also why our grass keeps growing and we can't mow it. Um, and as you'll see in this department, most capital jobs are on target, and only some minor delays. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO, Councillor Bonaventura. <laughs> Just in relation to our, our water usage, I'd like, uh, if possible, uh, what our monthly average water consumption is. Even just the last month or the last couple of months, if someone has the ability so, to do yeah, that. You're able to answer that or we flick it to the director? Uh, to you, Your Worship. Um, obviously, the, the weather does impact it, but for the last couple of weeks, we've probably been averaging between 28 and 30 megalitres coming from the Nebo Road water treatment plant. And obviously, that probably does about 90% of our population. So about 28 to 30 meg per week. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Per week. Further questions? No further questions. Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Payton, seconded by Councillor Cam. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Another review by the board, by officers and the director. Uh, yeah, the weather that we've been having has definitely uh, helped us along uh, as far as what's known, not having to produce as much water. So, great to see. Keep up the good work, director. Speaker against. Other speakers? Councillor Bonaventure. <coughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Worship. And speaking for the motion, I would like to issue a challenge. You will have noticed in the monthly report that my H2O registrations were about 125 below our target of 14,300. Unfortunately, with our average of 45 per month, we are likely to run short. So I'd like to ask the CEO to consider some extra form of publicity to try and get us over the line. Now apparently, getting over the line was Councillor Bella tried to do for a long time. I have to say I'm not sure how successful that was for him. but. As a spokesman uh, for water, maybe he would be happy to have a go. Your Worship, CEO, councillors, the full-time whistle on this financial year is not far off, and the clock is against us. But I issue a challenge to Councillor Bella. Come off the bench, grab the press release from the back of the scrum, show it a few times, then tuck it under your arm, put in the hard yards with the media pack, show some true Queensland spirit, and there's no better time of year to do it than now. And can you chalk up another win? Can you get us across the line to meet our 14,300? Thank you, Councillor Bonaventura. Any other speakers? Councillor Bella. Um, before the motion? Yeah, um, I suppose I've got to reply in some way. Um, I've actually been a um, unashamed admirer of the whole My Water system. I think it's wonderful. I've actually had the opportunity to take advantage of it myself with a leak. Um, and surprisingly enough, uh, all it was was a toilet that was leaking slightly. Um, visually could not see it, but it actually increased water usage quite a lot. I, as I said, unadulterated, unashamed admirer of the system. Um, if our um, staff can think of any way that we can promote it, and I'd be quite happy to do so, 
Um, I would not use the footballing analogy too much because in 15 years of professional football, I only crossed the line four times. So it wasn't my forte. But I can get it close to the mark and someone can probably get it over for me. Um, yeah, I, I think we should really, really hook into this because it is something that is, one, tremendous. Two, it's something that we developed ourselves. And three, I think it's of direct benefit to all of our ratepayers that can take advantage of it. So give it to them, let it have it, let them have it, and um, they'll see the benefits. Yeah, thank you, Council Member. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 11.5 is the ECI Waste Services Review for April. See you. Thank you, Worship. Uh, good memory for interviews in April. A great effort by the uh, staff in that department. Waste management software system was upgraded, was successful, and went live in 15th of April, which is good and another uh, good way forward for the organisation in terms of managing and, and tracking waste. Uh, great to see we will host the next Law Mac meeting uh, in late May. Uh, financially, the department's on budget and slightly favourable for the year. I will make a comment, which uh, the councils will know as part of our budget deliberations, that the state, in their wisdom, has decided to pay the waste levy uh, for the 1920 uh, year to us this year, before 30th of June, which, while a positive for revenue in 1819, the actual cost will be incurred in 1920. So that will have a significant impact on our budget for next year, even though it's in and out. Uh, I see the tonnes of waste to Hogan's pockets down slightly for April, probably a little bit to do with Easter and the weather. Uh, the landfill gas operations continue to go very well. If you look at the graph, it's one of the best ones we've ever had in terms of the generation of, of uh, burning of that gas. Uh, and our capital projects in this department are well on track. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO. Councillor Camp. Oh, Mayor, the question is probably for you, actually, versus the CEO in relation, and the CEO touched on it, with the implementation of the Queensland Waste Levy and, uh, and Council's preparation to that and, and understanding that the community probably are yet to fully realise what this implementation plan means for both um, the council but also their hip pocket. Uh, has there been any uh, discussion at all um, with our state member to make representation? Because at, at the moment in the current budget forecast, you know, it's in the vicinity of a 2.5% rate increase on top of whatever council's already considering. Um, so my, my question is about in the state's wisdom to pay out funds for, for an expense that we're going to incur in, in the next 12 months for a new council to have to deal with. Um, what representation have we requested or can we request? That's a good question and, and certainly can we, we request is something we really need to, to start thinking about as a council now. Um, because of the impost uh, that is now going to come to uh, the table, uh, for the waste levy and other stuff like the cost of the election that we've been just uh, mm -hmm. um, delivered. We've been dealing mainly through the LGOQ, who've been representing Queensland councils to the state government. But maybe it is time that now we take it up with uh, our local members and drive that thrust uh, because all councils of our size are faced with uh, quite an impossible budget, as you know. Mm. So we'll take them on board and, uh, and I'll talk uh, through the Council of Mayors uh, to maybe deliver a little bit of extra gravitas to the situation by having the Council of Mayors back our interaction with our local members. Mm, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Council of Wilmer, Oh, just on page 60, Your Worship. And I will notice there there's a negative comment received um, to a media <coughs> update stating we send our rubbish to Malaysia instead of recycling. Your Worship, since the China sword and the Ipswich threat to send recycling to landfill hit the news, I believe sections of the public do not believe we recycle. We all know nothing could be further than the truth and we have a top class MRF that's uh, sending all materials within Australia. Last week I attended the Master Plumbers Association trade forum in Mackay with uh, regional councils, Mackay Regional Council staff who were guest speakers. After that the waste manager delivered his presentation about the impacts of the waste levy. Is this a question, Councillor Bob? No, 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 this is there was a question coming. The only question was, do we landfill our recycling? Now, if 20% of residents believe, this is fair to say, they would not be worried about contaminating their recycling bin. And this easily gives us that 7% elevation in recycling contamination that was reported last month. So I would like to ask the CEO to give serious consideration to finding a way to counteract this misnomer through a concentrated public awareness campaign. Thanks, Councillor Wilder, we'll take that on board. Any further questions? 
Any further questions? But simply to move the re report be adopted, please. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor Payton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, another good report here. Uh, it's great to see such a small team uh, progressing very well. There's, uh, they've got a lot on their plate with uh, all that's happening in waste at the moment. Uh, the CEO touched on the uh, LawMac meeting being here. It will actually be here tomorrow uh, with a uh, very good briefing set aside uh, for the whole day. Uh, we have representatives from uh, EPA, uh, LGAQ, the QDC, DES and uh, other organisations that will uh, give briefings which will cover over the likes of the state waste strategy, uh, waste levy and their recycling. So, I uh, would encourage all councillors to get along to that. Um, but yeah, uh, once again, our uh, team in that area are doing a great job. Thanks, Councillor Payton. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Mayor. Your Worship, I'd just like to um, bring attention to everybody about a when we're talking waste and waste to landfill and recycling. There's a family in our region, a family in the <coughs> who have just achieved this week 495 grams of rubbish to landfill. Um, they were excited a couple of weeks ago that it was under a kilo. So that's what's going in their green rubbish bin every week. And I have passed on the details to our waste services team because I think that that's an initiative worth promoting given the challenges we're gonna face into the future with landfill and, and recycling. Very good, thank you. Okay. Other speakers, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Number point six is uh, ECI's transport and drainage monthly review for Apple CEO. Thank you. Um, again, pleasing to see no major injuries, but a number of incidents, including minor asset damage, which is something we've spoken about before that we need to continue to get on top of. Uh, wet weather continues to lay some road maintenance. So we've got eight crews, but we have had some impact, and it is also delaying some of our capital projects. Hopefully, we can get some fine weather for a while. Uh, you'll note that the special maintenance work on Aspley Way Drain, there's a photo in there of the extensive work that was done there and that stabilisation of the bank is completed. Uh, and mostly we've completed the works on the Bridge Road Drain, both very important uh, infrastructure project. Budget is favourable um, and it's mostly on the favourable side to the timing of revenue, but we don't have any concerns about whether it's going to end up at the end of the year. Very pleasing, the Midgepoint Beach repairs are now 80% complete and will be finished by the end of May. We're into the same as Lambert's Beach, we're into the re -veg and fencing to finish all those off. Um, so fortunately, we've got through with our beach repairs getting through the storm season, uh, and it'd be great to see that. And uh, we'll continue to water the reveg to make sure that it's in uh, good shape for the next storm season. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO? No. Councillor Bonaventura. Well, just in relation to Mitch Point, you worship, I was up there on the weekend, and yes, the beach is looking very, very good. Um, just uh, would like the CEO to uh, keep in mind that as the weather does start to dry, um, and we're watering sand apparently, you know, three times a week or something like that. Those plants, it may need to be watered a little bit more uh, because uh, the last thing we'd need to do is lose those plants while they're getting established. So just ask the CEO if you could keep that in mind, please. I'm sure our parks and gardens are good. Well, uh, on their radar, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, so thanks, Council Biomaterial. Are there questions? No other questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption, please. Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Biomaterial. Councillor Casey. Thank you, Worship. As the CEO alluded to, the rain has affected a, a fair bit. We haven't had a lot, but it's just enough to keep everything nice and muddy and the drains, the drains are still working fine. Uh, they're going great. Uh, maintenance is done where they can get to it, but as we all appreciate, a couple of showers of rain, you can't even get a May yarn yard. So uh, I'd um, commend the, the guys for the work they're doing in somewhat adverse conditions. So well done. Thanks very much, Councillor Casey. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Is our live streaming working? Uh, on the on the website it is, Your Worship. Oh, so right, we've okay. we got people watching that on a minute, but unfortunately there's a circle going around and around <laughs> here. Right. But it is working live. Okay. Okay. Right. The right. reflections on the head has damaged the camera. Right. <laughs> right. All right, let's move on. 11.7, the petition and the request for uh, a budget funding for the construction of a formalised boat ramp. CEO, do you, would you like to just speak to this? I just, if I may, just quickly, I think the report clearly spells out the, the, the boat ramp. You'll see that there has been some high level costing that done for this. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say there's no issues at all that um, you know, some residents have put forward a petition for this ramp. Um, as the councillors know, this council in the next 12 months has got just under $3 million of boat ramp. Um, works already approved, 1.3 million of funding through the state. 
uh, for the Fed, sorry, and uh, and the rest of our money for full boat ramps and major upgrades to CCTV and uh, and parking and so on. So I think we're doing a lot in that space. This particular one was not on the high priority list uh, and it wasn't necessarily on the high priority list of the state. That said, uh, what we're suggesting is we go back and say that right now for the next year or so, we've got other priorities we've already committed to in this space um, and we can continue to have a look at whether the Council of the Day would like us to do any more work on it as we go forward, as it becomes a high priority. Thanks, uh, So the uh, officer's recommendation for this petition is that uh, alternative funding commitments have been made for our budgets through the 2022 uh, and that um, construction allocation of the funding will be considered as part of uh, future budget allocations in terms of this particular boat ramp and that we advise the principal petitioner accordingly. Are there questions? Somebody would like to move the reports adoption, please. Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Casey. Councillor Mann. I think we worship that the, the CEO has really highlighted it all. I mean, it was an ungazetted and unapproved um, launching facility. So on that basis, and on that basis, and to upgrade it to a boat ramp is quite significant in the amount of car parking that needs to be provided. So I believe the officers have put a lot of time and effort into providing this report for us, and it clearly spells out that we're not saying we're not going to do it. We're just saying that at the moment it's not budgeted for. Um, and look, this is about the sixth petition or submission that's been received. So each time it is looked at. Um, so I believe we've got provision to have a look at it in future years and I've, I've, hopefully that will satisfy the residents. Thank you very much, Council Man. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Thank you. 11.8 is the Capital Works Monthly Review for April. See you. Uh, thank you, Wesh. I'll be quick. Um, as you will see, a lot of efforts going into this monthly report by the Director and his staff uh, and you'll see a lot more information, photos and updates on key projects. So. Uh, it will continue to evolve. Great to see and a credit to the department about no major injuries and only one minor asset damage incident for the whole month. Uh, considering the amount of work we've done, that's, that's excellent. Uh, 10.2 million was spent in April with the year-to-date expenditure now just under 100 million, which is at 98.3 year-to-date. Um, 522 projects made up our capital program again this year, so we continue to do a lot of work. Uh, some of those are as big as the mark at 20 odd million, and then there's some smaller ones, but there's still a massive amount of work that we do here. Um, and of that, there's easily, the numbers are all clear in there, what's complete and what's uh, still going on. Um, another just under $2 million of key contracts were valued and finalised in April, uh, with one of those uh, most notable being the Stage 1 Convict was awarded for Cavalieri's Park uh, Stage 1 but works. Stage 2 <coughs> tender works are out for that now. Uh, and as I say, there's an update in there on some key projects that we'll continue to work on. Thanks, CEO. It's a great report to read, and 98%, that's absolutely fantastic. Other questions? Councillor Casey. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, the CEO, you mentioned the asset damage. Who picks up the uh, cost of the repairs there? Because, you know, it says we uh, went through and been advised that the uh, conduit was redundant, and yet we cut it, they come back and say, oh, no, it's still active. So uh, who picks up the cost of the repairs? Yeah. Uh, every situation is a little bit different, Councillor Casey. Uh, unfortunately, the, the trouble it takes to try to get other parties to, to take liability is probably significantly greater than the value of just going and sorting it out. Uh, we have a lot, we hit a lot of cables that aren't on many plans, they're not far enough under the ground, we've talked about that before. What we do do is learn when we hit one, so we know next time, uh, but I can say with, with pretty much certainty that most of the stuff we have, not just in this direction, is we, we don't, we're not very successful unless it's a clear, blatant, recorded, but someone hasn't put it in properly. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of effort to go and chase up probably easy for us to just get in there and do it. But we do try, but we don't have a lot of success. Thank Other you. questions? Just, Councillor Bowman, you. Just following up from Councillor Casey's one in relation to damage to our road structure on uh, jobs such as the uh, midpoint um, sand revenge. Uh, local residents say that, you know, the road edges are getting sort of eroded and the drop-offs are quite high. Who's responsible for that, or is that part of the contract, uh, a make good at the end of uh, their contract? Who checks it, and is it whose responsibility? So, yeah. uh, thank you, Councillor Monitor. I wouldn't be able to regurgitate that exact contract, but my suggestion was this probably wouldn't be covered to that level. I know for a lot of works we do on other quarries and so on, we do have make good provisions for contractors in to make sure any damage to the road is. But on some of our other contracts, I suggest that we don't necessarily have that as standard all the time. So ultimately, if that's not covered off in the contract specifically for the contractor's responsibility, that would be at our cost. Okay. And uh, whether that's for allowed for or not, we'd have mm -hmm. to look at each individual case to yeah. have a look at that. 
Well, in this situation, I did advise residents that they needed to wait till the job was completed before uh, looking into the council would look into the situation at all. So, okay. We'll keep an eye on that, Councillor Bonaventure. Thank you, Councillor May. Uh, just one quick question. I note that there's thirty odd million dollars worth of capital work still to deliver, so that will be either in this month of May plus June. Is the director confident that we will reach one hundred percent by thirtieth of June? Ninety eight percent. Uh, happy to pass that to the director. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy to ask the director. <laughs> Through the mayor, um, we are confident that all the work is currently committed. So I think there's about twenty-three million dollars now currently committed in contracts to be completed this year. Uh, we've got eight million of gifted assets, which is um, reliant on the developers, um, and I think we have a few million of internal works. Okay. So we're confident that it's in place to deliver. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> As uh, confident yes. as I can be. Is that, that sounds a very <laughs> diplomatic answer, rather. Sure, thank you. So well, there's no the context. For all that. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor May. Any further questions? No further questions? Would somebody like to move the officer's recommendation be adopted, please? Anybody? Councillor May. Councillor Walker seconds. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Just really, like we have done, we've had a strong focus on our capital delivery this year. New director coming on board, and I think um, with all credit due, um, and I'll, I'll wait to see the 30th of June result. But we are we are a, a great improvement on on previous performances, and the team have done a great job. So. Absolutely, here, here, we're in a better position this time of the year than I think the council may have ever been in. So fantastic. Um, speaker against any other speakers, Councillor Bella. Um, I was pleased to read in the report things that are dear to my heart. Um, finishing or doing some work on the extension of the workshop shed. Um, when you get in a situation where you're handling machinery and that sort of thing, space is absolutely um, imperative there. Um, and I believe that adequate space leads to less uh, opportunity for injuries, the so safety of the staff. Going a little bit further along, um, reloading of sewer mains. Um, could say it's a crappy job, but I'm very happy that it's being done. Uh, we have had problems with uh, things like that for a long period of time, and I'm very, very glad that we're continuing along those lines. Um, coming from a science background, uh, I was quite stunned when we went to our old lab facility uh, to see the conditions that our staff were working under and the job they were doing. So when there was the opportunity for this uh, new facility, the new lab, um, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. Um, and what we have to realise is that the number of tests that uh, our staff um, undertake and uh, the revenue that that can raise for council is significant. So those three things alone, um, and obviously purchase of adequate plant, but you know, I think that's an outstanding, outstanding result. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? Put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. So 11.9 is the uh, Org Services monthly review for April CEO. Thank you, Your Worship. And I know we've got a new director, and the old one used to say the most exciting report of all our meetings. So I need to keep that going for a new director. Um, again, uh, no LTIs, one, only one near miss for the month. And again, I know we'll think this part, it's all accounts, but we have a lot of staff, workshop staff, and a lot of other people in this space. Again, fantastic effort. Uh, you'll notice our customer service officers continue to exceed targets and do a fantastic job with over 8,200 calls. Um, I was lucky enough to, to open the regional safety exchange. I think there was like seven or eight other councils there. Um, all, all it told me when I opened it, we had some feedback from other councils is, how good a staff we've got and how passionate we've got in our organisation around making sure we don't hurt people. So it's a credit to everybody. Um, you'll notice that visitation to our aquatic facility is reduced. It's getting colder, that's, that's typical in all our facilities. Um, you'll notice that we do continue to struggle with some IS KPIs. Um, we do believe now we're getting on top of that. Uh, it is a bit of a struggle. Um, and I just, you would have seen some emails last week around our cyber security attacks. Um, Again, so that takes some of our staff off sometimes, but um, they're doing a great job and we're pretty confident we'll be right uh, going forward in those KPIs. Thanks, CEO. Questions for the CEO? Yes, okay. we um, can. Thank you, Mayor. I just had a question as to the rela uh, in relation to the Serena pool, that the contract has been sorted there for the, for the, um, 
the management of that facility? Has that all been finalised? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Cam. I'm confident it's a yes, uh, but if it's all right, I'll come back and confirm that. I know there's been discussions. Uh, I haven't heard anything. That's always a good sign. <laughs> Uh, and I'm pretty sure that we went through that, as you remember last year, we went through a little bit of a problem yes. with the state, and then there was a carryover then of the current agreement. Yes. And I know that conversation's been going for several months, so um, I haven't been informed there's an issue, so I'll take uh, that as a positive. Uh, that my, have to it's my understanding that, that there hasn't been finalised, okay. not with the state, but with the actual management okay. there. But that's that could have changed in the last week or two, but that was... Yeah, I haven't signed it, so okay. that, I would have to have signed the final. Okay. So I can tell you that it hasn't been formally signed, but right. I haven't understood that there's any issues. issues. So I will come back to you out of cycle and okay. give you the timing on that. That would be excellent, excellent. thank you. I do have a second one. Um, and that's just in relation to the R, and in particular around the engagement with swim clubs across our region, um, with the Mackay R. So similarly with the athletics clubs, there was a very proactive approach to engage the clubs because I think Mackay Athletics will be housed there uh, and their equipment, et cetera, is there. So, and happy to come out of session, just understanding from both sport and rec and also corporate um, services, understanding there's sort of an overlap there. Have um, all of our swimming clubs in the district and committees had the opportunity to go out, see the facility, but also actually understand uh, what the opportunity is for them to uh, participate out there and also to hold um, carnivals out there as well because um, I do know that there's a number of local carnivals coming up yeah. and whether or not um, so this is just specific to the swim, swim clubs and who the point of contact would be for those swim clubs as well. So uh, yeah thank you Councillor Cam. Um, I know that initially as you would know because you were the chair of the Health and Mark Committee, I'm not sure that's the right term, but uh, mm -hmm. The, uh, we, know, we did invites to all the swim clubs and a lot of them came along for our pre-opening and so on. Yeah. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of work going in this space, but I'll get the details and send it around mm. for you and, and as well as talking to the operator. Yes. Uh, I know they're quite proactive because I've been in contact by a couple of swim clubs and giving mm. positive feedback about that okay. interaction, okay. but whether it's all of them, and I'll yeah. just come back to you. Just a follow-up, I guess, yeah. from that, that okay. session. Thank you. All right, further questions? Councillor Walker. Yeah. Um, just in relation to the insurance review, apparently there was only uh, no tenders, apparently, Probably revert back to the local government one. Are we happy with what they're providing? Uh, I know in previous years they seem to be providing a very good standard at a quite a good price. Is that still the case? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Walker. I think it was a question last meeting and we sent an email around out, out of cycle around where that's at. Yeah, you're right, there was tenderers. There was one uh, we actually got a little bit excited for a while, thinking that the people we were going to go with were going to save us a significant amount of money. Uh, when they went to the market, uh, they couldn't deliver on on that the market didn't give them that same information so we have reverted back um, we've never really had an issue uh, with the local government uh, one uh, it was me that said to my staff last year that i'd like to test the market how can you be sure of the what you're getting is value for money unless you test the market so i asked the market to be tested the market's been tested and we're reverting back uh, so we haven't got the final number. We have allowed in our budget for 1920 a slight increase, but not a significant one, which we're confident that's the way it'll be. Okay, further questions, Councillor May? Um, just on page 158, the diversity and inclusion and the leadership program, is the CEO able to offer just a little bit more detail around that on how that went over the, the couple of days? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Mate. Yeah, I went for a, for a while uh, to the opening of the special speakers. Um, very, very well received by staff. Um, the very first one was 70 odd staff at, at Harrop Park in the Lancaster room. Um, uh, like, I think you remember the survey results we had about some other surveys. Um, it's, it's raised a lot of good questions. I think it's a lot, of, a lot about awareness and how people relate to uh, unconscious bias, uh, me included. Uh, it's been very well received. We've done not only you know the standard when you finish, can you fill out the form because no one wants to do that. We've had verbal feedback, very very positive. So uh, I'd like to. I think I mentioned previously. Uh, I'd like to roll it out to to councils and that as well. We just want to do a test run. Sure. And to the previous uh, manager's credit, he's pushed this himself, and uh, and now we've got the staff on board and kicked it off. We plan to do another one. It's actually planned to roll out the rest of the staff and I'd like to also include councils in the next one. We just wanted to test it first, but it's been very positively received. That's great, yeah. thank you. Right, okay. Councillor Kent. Um, Mayor, just in relation to the project, the Mackay Regional Skills Investment Strategy, um, reminds me of 15 years ago, there was a skills formation strategy as well. So the state obviously roll out this program, and I know we have an officer who's been um, uh, 
resourced, I guess, in a way to lead this project. And we know the report here is full of a lot of information, but, but where does that information go from this project? So council, it's sort of tied up in our reporting. Um, I'm just wondering whether there's value in a, in a briefing to come to council about that project, but how is that project, and maybe the briefing's the best place, connecting with RDA, economic development, um, mm. cane growers, meat and livestock Australia. I see there's a lot of rural elements yeah. to it. DAF. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, good question. Good yeah. Care. Thank you. Yeah, our role is really our commitment as a staff member. Mm -hmm. Maybe pay for uh, staff member. They, they sit here, and then we get the benefits out as well. But it's a very good question. Most of the reporting goes back through the funding through the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously benefiting from that information and playing a facility mm -hmm. role. Uh, but I, I think that's a great idea to step out the two-year program mm -hmm. because I know our, our officer is on a two-year to mm -hmm. do that. Uh, we'll give a briefing on the stepping out, the timelines, the plans, who's involved, who's deciding who's involved and not, because it's not just our officer, it's through the state and then these other mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So we can do that through the briefing. I think that's okay. the best way. Mm -hmm. Very good. Further questions? So we'd like to move the report's adoption, please. Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor Anglin. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Leslie. Um, so, um, again, with this department, um, the focus on safety is um, to the forefront of everybody's minds with no LTIs. One um, incident involving staff members, and interestingly, there was two involving contractors where they were called into account too to be, you know, to, to hold the or to um, abide by the same safety rules as the rest of the staff in this council. So I think that's commendable that we treat everybody the same. Um, Customer service officers again exceeded targets, and so it's not just calls taken, it's calls completed as well, at an average of about 430 a day. So that's massive when you think it's not just answering a phone, it's actually completing the call, which sometimes can be quite a process as well. Um, I, I noted the CEO said some of our KPIs weren't met in our IT area, but that's because of specific challenges with it, um, replacing staff. But I think very importantly for me, anyway, all of our major systems were available all the time. So basically 100% of the time, which for a business this size is a big skill, you know, a big achievement in itself. Um, I'd also like to congratulate our director, who's only been in the job for a couple of months on her first TV interview. I believe she did extremely well. I didn't get to see it myself, but um, that's the first one out of the way, so I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Laird. Uh, speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 11.10 is the strategic financial report for the month of April, CEO. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just will say that when there was a choice for the media to choose the director or me, it was always going to be an easy target. Which one was the better <laughs> looking one? Um, That's right. Strategic. It wasn't a vote. Um, <laughs> the strategic financial report. Um, this time of year, we've done a March reforecast. This is at the end of April. We didn't do the reforecast till the 8th of May. So. The $418,000 uh, for our surplus was eroded by our March budget review, which was a $1.7 million deficit, just to keep everybody completely confused. Now, because of the waste levy, I think it's going to be a $1.5 million surplus. So um, it's part of our, our, our obligations every month is to report. Um, I, I'm, I'm letting you know now that for the full year of 2018-19, we expect it now to be back to a surplus because of the waste levy issue I mentioned previously. So these numbers are a part of the end of the month, but they're moving. Um, but that's just to give a quick update. We've seen a, a significant amount of movement in the last couple of months on the forecast for the end of the year, but we're back in a surplus, which is good. Questions? Can, so can. Can we prepay the election costs next year? <laughs> <laughs> Out of the waste levy. <laughs> I didn't ask Councillor <laughs> Cam, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. Yeah. We could have a go. <laughs> No further questions? Can somebody like to move the report's adoption, please? Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. It's a great report, and, and we're nearing the end of the financial year. I think the team have done a fantastic job in, in managing our finances. Um, we have a look at the report, and we see our cash reserves are strong. We see our borrowings decreasing, and our rate arrears is also decreasing. So I think you know the team have done a fantastic job. It's not been easy. There has been lots of ins and outs and changes along the way, um, and which is good. It is great to see that local government can be flexible in their arrangements and in, in making sure that we meet our commitments, um, we meet the, the, um, the needs of our community, 
and still end up with a great result. So well done to the team. Yeah, thank you very much, Councillor May. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. And point one one, the development services monthly review for April CEO. Uh, thank you, Worship. Again, uh, great safety performance in a uh, high risk area. Uh, we did a few minor incidents, which again we'll continue to focus on. Um, the land <coughs> options for the Northern Beaches Community Hub are continuing. Expect to come back in June with some information around that. And it was great to hear that it's part of the election outcome that uh, there's a six and a half million dollar commitment from. Um, the local, uh, now returned local member and uh, his associated party for 6.5 for that project. So I look yeah. forward to talking to the, uh, the state, uh, the federal uh, um, uh, funding people to talk about how we can sign up for that. Um, very, very, all our other, other shovel ready projects are in different stages. So the master plan options for the development of the Moroni Heritage Precinct, there's a number of councillors who came out to a, another meeting this week. That's progressing well, very well received. Uh, still a way to go with the master plan, but the, the community people who were there at that meeting were very, very positive around uh, that subject too. Obviously, um, future commitments by council once we understand the full scope. Um, a lot of good work's been done on the Mackay floodplain management plan and the flood studies. I think it was mentioned previously by councillors on how important that work is to this region. Feasibility study for the mountain bike track, uh, progressing well and on track. Uh, that's due back in September. We'll see how we go and even hopefully bring that forward a little bit. Uh, I haven't heard of any major issues as yet. Uh, continued concept, concept level planning and costing for the PDA. Uh, so we had a briefing in recent times to <coughs> understand what the costings might be. Um, and we're very hopeful of the PDA development scheme announcements uh, very in the very near future. Um, the tender for the Resource Centre of Excellence is, uh, is as design was awarded in April and we're out. I just see today uh, some, some, some drawings and plans now. So we're working closely with Resource Industry Network. So uh, we had our steering group meeting. I chair that uh, with the state and, and staff this week. So all on track. So that tender should go out shortly, which will be again very exciting. And the tender for the regional events strategy closed in April, and, and that'll be sorted out in the next couple of weeks as well. So there's a lot happening. Thank you, CEO. You know, yes, uh, certainly is. When you read that report, it shows you uh, what this council is involved in, which is fantastic. Any questions? Any questions? Would somebody like to move the report's adoption, please? Uh, okay, Councillor Bonaventura, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Bonaventura. I just wonder if I may, Your Worship, and that's just in relation to the floodplain uh, management work that's going on. Uh, having attended uh, one of these uh, community group meetings um, last uh, Sunday, uh, there were staff there, people from uh, the consultants, and community were there to give us their picture on where the water levels reached in different areas. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. But it also, it was good to see them coming out and giving us those details. They're willing to, for our staff and the, the uh, consultants to go and meet with them and show them markers on posts and trees and road levels. And this will give um, us a good picture of where that flood level got to for future reference. So I think it's very worthwhile work. But apart from that, a good report. Thank yes. you. Thanks very much, Councillor Mullivich. You're a speaker against. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. Then point 12 is the Reconciliation Action Plan adoption. We've been through this uh, quite at length, councillors. Um, I think it's pretty well straightforward. This is a good report and uh, congratulations to the CEO and the staff for the wrap. Uh, to get this up and running now is fantastic. You also note, councillors, that the flag, uh, the addition of the flagpole and the flag is now flying. So it will be a, a wonderful thing for us to be able to adopt this wrap. Any questions? So we'd like to move the adoption of the wrap. Councillor Cam, seconded by Councillor Payton. Councillor Cam. Um, thank you, Moshe. This has been, uh, I know, a, a, a long um, process. So I want to commend staff and stakeholders who've been involved in this process. It was something that many councils around the table had uh, driven and wanted to see uh, a more meaningful wrap that, uh, that really reflected, I think, the intention of this council um, to connect with our uh, traditional owner groups and in particular our, uh, also our Torres Strait Islander and Australian South Sea Islander community as well but in particular uh, the Ubira people and the broader Uibara people across our region um, that our region extends to. Uh, so with that I hope, uh, I notice there's a lot of actions in there uh, obviously for certain uh, managers across our, our, um, our organisation 
but in the adoption of this RAP, it's certainly part of the responsibility of every councillor and, and every member of our organisation, where possible, to understand uh, what, we're, what we're trying to achieve with it as a community and as an organisation in reconciliation with our First Nations people. So with that, I just want to congratulate the director and her team, and in particular, all of the stakeholders that were involved. Yeah, yeah. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously. Receipt of uh, petitions now, 12.1 is the um, Mackay War, War Memorial Pool that we've received from... Um, uh, a number of people, that's right, yes. Was there a print petition? Look, I, I mean, CEO, is there anything you, you want to say to this? Or, or? Uh, just that, um, uh, Andrew, our processors will, re will receive the petition formally today, Your Worship, and I think the information contained will be part of our uh, deliberations around the aquatic strategy which includes the memorial pool. Yeah, I don't think there's anything more we can actually say to that. Any questions? Would somebody like to move the report's adoption? Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Cam. Councillor Casey? It's all been said, you wish. OK, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Right. So... We've got no notified motions. Public participation. Nobody's registered for public participation. Late business. Councillor Mayor. Thank you. Um, you were on the 9th of May, um, Councillor May and I attended a presentation at the Macquarie Base Hospital um, of an echo echocardiograph ultrasound machine for the children and adolescent unit. So previous to that machine being purchased, people who needed to travel to, to Brisbane for treatment, so this, this affects children specifically, um, and we had 50 families that were needed to travel every two months to have treatment and tests for their children. Um, other than that, we had treating or uh, visiting physicians bringing their own machines or they were being borrowed from other parts of the hospital. So the Mackay Hospital Foundation set up a group to fundraise um, and it was made up of a broad section of people from our community and I was privileged to be asked to be on the committee and we just come up with ideas on how we might fundraise. But truly, it was a collaboration right around this region of many service groups, businesses, individuals who all got on board. The target was to raise $131,000. The campaign was launched officially in July last year. We reached that target by January this year, plus exceeded it. So there was a total of $151,000. And I don't want to single anybody out because everybody, really, <coughs> what they gave was invaluable. But Freemasons came on board right at the very last, um, and they had about eight of their um, representatives there on the night, and they donated, I think it was around $20,000. But Flagon and Dragon agreed to match um, for every dollar that we raised, $2. So that is just amazing. And the whole project is a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful example of what can be done with collaboration. So I have been asked to be part of the next project as well, which hasn't been released yet. But I guess for me, I, I was on that committee as a representative of this council. So this belongs to the council as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I just think it goes to show what we can do. Thanks very much, Councillor Matt. Well done. Thank you very much. And we'll hang that with pride. Yeah, well, that's got your name. Well done. Thank you. Further late business, Councillor Camp. Um, thank you, Worship. I just wanted to draw Council's attention to, um, as we come to the end of May, uh, it's recognition of uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month and this Saturday down at, um, uh, we, we have a free family fun day as part of the, uh, the Domestic Violence Resource Service and Combined Women's Centre uh, that's being hosted. So it's a free family fun day with family activities and I'm encouraging all councils to participate. There'll be market stalls. Um, etc. down there, but it really is about, um, uh, I guess, adding to the message that Council has been uh, out advocating for some time through the task force that we say no to violence. And I must say the take-up rate of the wheelie bin and sticker promotion has is, uh, is really, people are really asking for them, which is fantastic, right. and it's raising uh, that awareness in a very small way uh, to be able to um, have people, I guess, talk about it and also have the access of the messaging of DV Connect, which is a service there um, for women and children and others who are victims of domestic violence as well. So. Thanks very much. Councillor Cam. To John Breen Park. Yes, sorry, Councillor Casey. I was trying to find that. It's John Breen Park. Oh, no, I was going to say see. Queen's Park. That's where it was. I could see that. Thank you. <laughs> John Breen Park. Okay, Councillor Manager. I did have something else too. Um, so 
We decided, and I'm sorry, but I've ditched the mayor's ball in favour of this um, <laughs> this event on Saturday that, night, given my passion really for heritage around the region. So we've got Greenmount after dark, um, and it's a tour of Greenmount. Um, we didn't know how successful it would be, so we've now got enough names to fill three tours, which won't all happen on, on Saturday night, but it's a future thing that hopefully will be really well embraced. So um, because we, we normally have um, events around uh, Australian Heritage um, Month, we sort of missed out, but this was our gesture, I guess, towards recognising our heritage. And I'm really pleased to see that it has been sold out and that it may continue again in the future. So that's where I'll be on Saturday night. Well, you'll forget it, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Councillor Casey. Thank you, Your Worship. Yourself uh, and several others, Councillor Bonaventura, Walker, uh, G and myself attended the uh, launch of the uh, Hungry Caterpillar book, which has uh, now been um, translated into uh, the native language of the area. And uh, it was very, very uh, well, fulfilling to see the young children there. They were getting up and they could uh, do all the actions and they know a lot more words now than what I ever did. But uh, it was great to see that. And then after that, we also attended the sod turning of the uh, Queen's Park project, which is uh, great to see it's off the ground there now. And I look forward to the uh, final uh, instalment of Queen's Park after many, many, many years. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Casey. But on late business, Councillor Bonaventure. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd just like to uh, mention it is National Volunteers Week, as we know. And look, our region benefits, uh, I reckon, in millions of dollars each year. Uh, you know, whether it's the SES or just the occasional day at the MEC. And that's just in council volunteering. But if we look wider afield in our region, there's hundreds and hundreds of volunteers and they're in everything from your sporting groups to your uh, community groups to your school PNCs. So they're everywhere. Um, but this today I'd even like to pay particular attention to volunteers that work at our op shops. And I have a close association with Vinnie's and I've over the last six years seen the effort that they put in as volunteers. So today I'd like to make special mention of those volunteers but give a heartfelt thanks to all volunteers within our region that help make Mackay what it is. Thanks Councillor Bonaventure. Councillor May. Thank you very much Your Worship. I've got two items that I'd like to raise for uh, late business today. The first one, and this is because we do not have a council meeting before these events happen. The first one is Queensland Day celebrations down at the Serena Field of Dreams Parklands, which is occurring on the Sunday the 9th of June from 11 till 2. So that's a family fun day celebrating Queensland Day. Um, we've got entertainment, we've got market stalls and, and lots of activities for the children. So please um, put that in your diary to come along. The second one is our Council and Community Day in the Southern region. And I just want to really give a shout out that we're trying something different this time and we're going to have a community catch up barbecue for breakfast. So get up right and early, come down to the Bakers Creek um, Hall and have breakfast with your councillors and raise any issues that you might like to raise. Um, so yeah, just really putting a, a big shout out to the community to come and join us for breakfast. Thank you very much, Councillor May. You, you're cooking the sausages. Uh, I believe so. <laughs> mm, you have a asset, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do actually. That's, right. That's very good. <laughs> Councillor England. Thank you, Worship. Um, attended the uh, Zac Mac on the weekend, and where Your Worship was there yeah. as well at the transition from mountain bike to um, to the kayak um, event. It is a unique event in this in in, in Australia, um, with with four particular individual um, disciplines used on the day. Um, competitor numbers are up again this year to 280 now. Unfortunately, the the solo um, trophies went to people from Townsville. I, I suppose that's a good thing. They came here and stayed a couple of days and spent some money while they're here, I hope. Um, but the young fellow all abilities, under the all abilities um, um, structure there, that, that we've had a local win that and Councillor G helped um, in, in the paddle again this year. Um, so it was good to see a local taking out one of the trophies. Um, so this is this is an event that the council's supported for a number of years now and it's good to see it's growing to a point now where we might start to see some real return on that investment. Um, I also attended on behalf of the Mayor the IMEA Surf Club um, end of season presentation night and it was an opportunity for um, us as Macquarie Regional Council to thank Surf Life Saving Club for their close relationship um, with uh, council and how and in the protection um, of people, people, members of our community and those visiting our, our 32 beaches. And as Councillor Ventura mentioned, it's uh, the SES, it's where I arranged to work day today. I'm aware of a report 
um, from 2014 that put a monetary value on, on, on what the SES um, saves this council. And as we know, under, under the Act, council has to provide an emergency response and has two options. It can either do it itself or employ a volunteer um, agency. And every all 72 councils in Queensland have an SES because uh, it's the most effective way um, for us to, to, create, to give that uh, service to the, to the ratepayers of our regions. Um, and it's not just about the money that they save the ratepayers by having um, established uh, and strong SES in our region. We are embedding resilience into our communities um, by those people in our communities that decide to train under that. So we remember, particularly in Volunteer Week, it is where I used to work today, where I used to work day to day, and our SES volunteers in our region. Thank you very much, Councillor Angle. Any other late business? No other late business? So, councillors, we have a, a couple of uh, perfunctory um, confidential reports. I don't see a need to go into uh, confidential. Does anybody? No. Okay. So let's then just, uh, would somebody like to, the draft minutes of the Regional Economic Working Group, 17.1, like to move? Councillor Mann, seconded by Councillor England. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.2 is the Engineering and Commercial Infrastructure and Development Services Monthly Legal Report. Councillor Bonaventura moves. Councillor Walker seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.3 is the approved concessions under the facilitating development in the Mackay Region Policy. So moved by Councillor Cam, seconded by Councillor Anglet. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. And 17.4 is the approved sponsorship under the Invest Mackay Events and in Conference Attraction Program. Councillor Payton moves. Councillor Anglet uh, seconds. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, CEO, and uh, thank you, directors and staff. That uh, concludes our meeting today. I declare it closed.